Welcome to February. Man, did, did January just fly by or what? And that's happens when you go through Leviticus. Time flies when you're going through Leviticus. That's what the saying has always been said. And actually, that's never been said. But man, January did go by really quick. Uh, we're in February now, February 1st. And uh, we Psalms this week. And uh, so glad to be able to do that with you here on the Daily Race. Uh, one step forward every day. That's the goal. Intentionality, being consistent over time. And uh, that's that's what this is about. And if you maybe you started watching the daily race at the beginning of January, saying, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get more engaged in God's word," if you made it to February, you broke the cycle. <laughs> you broke the 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 New Year's resolution kind of downfall that people you know do it for a couple weeks and then kind of fall off. If you made it to February, way to go! You are on your way. All right, we're in Psalm 74 today, and today uh, the question is why. Why? All right. Now, if you're a parent out there, or grandparents, or aunt or uncle, or teacher, or work with kids, uh, one of the words that kids love to ask is why, right? <laughs> like, and there's no end to it. Uh, you can give the best answer in the world. And what do they follow that up with? Why? Why? It's, it's the perfect response to any situation. They figure that out. Some kids do it because they're naturally curious. Some kids do it because, well, they're just little rascals, right? They, they know that it gets under under your skin uh, to keep asking that question. And kids kids are funny. Um, but because of that, I think because of the connotation of that word, why those interactions with kids and just kind of how it drives us to our wits end as parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles or whatever, that we think of it as being like a bad thing to do, ask why. We, we, would, we wouldn't think to ask that to God uh, because we're annoyed by the question. We assume that God would be annoyed by the question. And, and that's simply not the case. God's not annoyed by us asking him questions. God is bigger than our questions. Uh, God is, doesn't get offended by us asking for clarification or wanting to know things. And that's what Psalm 74 is is about. There's, there's a lot of questions in this. Um, it starts off with just two, two basic questions here. It starts off with some questions and then it gives some reasons why he's asking those questions. So that's, that's kind of a thing about that pattern. Like asking God questions and then stating why it is you're asking the questions in the, in the first place. And then he poses some more questions and then gives some reasons why he's asking those questions. And uh, it's this conversation to God. You know, we don't always got, go to God when things are going great. Um, we don't always go to God with a specific request. Um, solve this problem. Maybe you're just stuck. <laughs> Maybe you're going through a difficult time and just, God, why is this happening? Those are feelings. Those are emotions you can express to him. Now, let's start here in verse 1. It says, Oh God, why have you rejected us so long? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your pastor? So th what this is, is happening here is it's talking about the uh, destruction of Jerusalem. Now, uh, Asaph, this is a psalm of, of Asaph, was born before the destruction of Jerusalem. So either this is a prophetic psalm or it could be written by one of Asaph's descendants. And a lot of time it was, you know, if you're the son of so-and-so and it just kind of went by that name and it could be one of his descendants and just kind of attributed to that whole family. We're not quite sure. Um, but it's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem when uh, Nebuchadnezzar took over. It says this, so why have you rejected us for so long? Why is your anger so intense to the sheep of your own pastures? And then it says why? Remember that we're the people you chose long ago. The tribe you redeemed is your own special possession. And remember Jerusalem, your home here on earth. Walk through the awful ruins of the city. See how your enemies have destroyed your sanctuary. There your enemies shouted with victorious battle cries. There they set up their battle standards. They swung their axes like woodcutters in a forest. With axes and picks, they smashed the carved paneling. They burnt your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the place that bears your name. Then they thought, let's destroy everything. So they burned down all the places where God was worshipped. We no longer see your miraculous signs. All the prophets are gone, and no one can tell us when it will end. All of that in response to why have you rejected us so long? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your own pastures? He's saying, this is what I'm seeing. This is what we're experiencing, and my question here is, is why? Why does it feel like you've abandoned us? Uh, this is about, he's, this first part of the psalm is expressing what's going on in, in their life. Why they feel, why he feels abandoned, why they feel abandoned, why they feel overly punished. And, and then he turns it towards the accusers. So this is questioning what God has done to them, 
but now questioning what God hasn't done or what they don't, what they don't think God's done to other people. Here's the next set of questions. Um, verse 10. How long, O God, will you allow our enemies to insult you? Will you let them dishonor your name forever? Why do you hold back your strong right hand? So these people that have been doing all this to us, when, do you, when are they going to get the punishment? When are they going to feel your wrath? Like we've been feeling it. Now, when are you going to do that to them? Why haven't you done it yet? Unleash your powerful, <coughs> unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. You, O oh God, are my king from ages past, bringing salvation to the earth. And then he goes on and talks about God's power. You're powerful enough to do it. This isn't a matter of me not believing you have what it takes. That's not what this question is about. It's about your timing. It says, you split the sea by your strength and smash the head of sea monsters. You crush the head of Leviathan and let the desert animals eat him. Uh, you got, Leviathan, what is that? A giant, giant sea creature, giant sea monster, um, real, uh, mythical, not quite sure here. Uh, not that I'm not quite sure, kind of the commentaries aren't quite sure. There's kind of different camps there, but anyways, uh, you crush the head of Leviathan and set the desert and let the de desert animals eat him. You cause the springs and streams to gush forth. You dried up the rivers and that, that never run dry. Both day and night belong to you. You made the starlight and the sun. You set the boundaries on the earth. You made both summer and winter. See how your enemies insult you, Lord. A foolish nation has dishonored your name. Don't let these wild beasts remember or wild beasts destroy your turtle doves. Don't forget the suffering of your people. So, why is this happening to us? Why aren't you punishing these people? But I know that you're all powerful. In the midst of this, I, I understand that you are fully in control. So there's just, it ends with, with this. Remember your covenant promises, for the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be humiliated again. Instead, let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how these fools insult you all day long. Don't overlook what your enemies have said or their growing uproar. So it's this moment of utter devastation. And when, when bad things happen, what? And especially when bad things happen to us, what's our first question? Why? Why? We might feel real comfortable asking other people that. But God says, feel free to ask me. Feel free, free to ask me why. Uh, let it all out. Share your frustrations with me. Uh, I, I know them already. God knows them already. If you're thinking them, he, he knows them. God knows all things. Uh, but there's something healthy in expressing it to him. Maybe it's a letter that you write to God. Maybe it's a list of things. Uh, but being open and honest with how we're feeling, what we wish he would have done, what we wish would be differently, um, why we think it should have gone that way, according to his character and, and who he is, but then also leaving it with this sense of trust. That, that God, you have done all that you've created the universe. That, that you, didn't, you didn't slip up when this happened. This wasn't a mistake. Um, I just don't understand it yet. So I'm asking you why. I think that's the right posture, right? Is that we go, I, I don't understand this yet. And I might never understand it in this lifetime. But I'm just asking the question why. All right, let, let's, let's wrap up there today. Psalm 74, the question why that we hate to hear from other people, but pops into our mind when things are uh, not going well either. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we love you. And uh, God, we, we thank you that you, you want to hear from us. Not just the, the good things, but the bad things. Uh, not just praise, but frustration. But God, help us to keep it in balance. <laughs> that you are holy and mighty and powerful and have uh, created the world with the words that you spoke. Yet, we don't understand why. We're limited in our knowledge. So help us to, to recognize and realize that, that we can come to you with our frustrations. Thank you for listening to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And uh, I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.